G'day everyone, welcome to vMix. If you've just downloaded vMix for the first time, you're probably wondering what to do next. In this video, we're going to go through the interface of vMix and where you can find different things in your vMix production. I'm using vMix 18, so your screen might look a little different to mine, as we're adding new features to vMix all the time. Who knows, we may have even added a cool, friendly helper that assists you when you're first starting out. It looks like you're new to vMix. Can I help you? But don't worry, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. vMix is laid out like a traditional video switcher. So the first thing you'll notice, there are two large boxes at the top of the screen. These represent your preview and output. The preview, which is on the left in orange, represents the input that you want to use next in your production. You can use this window to preview your next shot, graphic or video, and then transition it to the output. The output, also known as the program, is in green on the right. Whatever is in the output window is what your viewers will see. If you're used to using different colors for the preview and the output boxes, then you can change them in the settings. Underneath that, you'll notice some smaller boxes. This is where your input area is. Anything you input into vMix, whether it be videos, cameras, graphics, audio, web browsers, etc., will appear down here in these small boxes. The inputs that are currently in the preview and output will have an orange or green color on them. Those that aren't being used are in blue, or whatever color you choose to set them up as. Okay, so let's add some content to our production to make this video a little bit more exciting. To add content to your production, you just need to go to the bottom left corner. Add input is where you add all of the things to your production. Once you click on add input, then you'll be able to choose uh, what input you would like to select for your production. So as you can see by the menu, you've got uh, videos, DVDs, list, camera, you know, stream, images, photos, PowerPoint, web browser, audio, flash, title, virtual set, um, you name it can be added from this input menu here. Now let's just go ahead and add a couple of videos um, for our demonstration. So you just browse for the video, and, um, you select one, click open, click OK, uh, then we'll just add another input. We're going to select another video just because it's a little bit easier, but it's the same process for other inputs, including cameras and, and images. We'll choose my favorite stock video involving peas, and we'll bring that input in. So now these videos appear in the input section. If you want to bring an input into the preview window, by default, you just need to click on it. If I want to transition to this video, I can just press any of the transition buttons in the middle here. And I'll explain a little bit more about that later on. Now I can also quickly transition to a video completely bypassing the preview by clicking the cut or the quick play underneath one of the videos. You can also actually edit the behavior of the mouse click for each of the input in the input settings. So for example, if I wanted to click on an input and make it go directly to the output, I can do that in the input settings. The numbers underneath each uh, input represent different overlay channels that you can use. So if we want to put an input uh, in the fourth overlay channel, we just click that number. So as you can see, it has moved into the, the fourth overlay channel, which we've set up, which is in the top right hand corner. The little audio button will turn on and off the audio for the input. And the little monitor will actually show that input as full screen and you can click it to close it down. Finally, in the bottom right of your input are your input settings. Now this is the location where you can change all of the individual settings for a particular input. Things like changing the name, changing the, uh, the mouse click action, um, all the different behaviors with your transitions and also color adjust, color key, positioning, multi-view, triggers, um, PTZ, all that kind of stuff can be added from this particular menu. Now we have plenty of videos on input settings so you can check those out from our YouTube channel. You can minimize your inputs by right clicking on their title and you can also split them up into categories. So the main screen here, which is in gray, contains all of your inputs. But if you want to separate them, you can drag them into different areas. So if I go to the blue section, I'll be able to see the peas video. And then I can also name this as well by right clicking. So you might want to add all your images into a particular category. It just helps break down your, your input section. Now the cool thing about vMix is you can actually see all of your videos in a live preview. So if we had some cameras here, we'd also be able to see them um, in a live preview as well in full quality. Now in the main input section, you'll also notice there's an audio mixer on the right hand side. If we go over here, we can click it to turn it on and you'll be able to edit each of your inputs audio by clicking the, the settings section and go to different sections here. You can also edit the master audio as well. 
Now, if you wanted to undock this, you can undock it by pressing the pin and then you can move it around. You can take it to another monitor if you wanted to. And then you can click the minimize button to pin it back. We have some audio videos as well that you can check out in our tutorial section to find out more about vMix audio. Now there's some lines here that you'll see. Now you can drag these up and down and create more space in your input section or bring this across um, for more audio. So like we said before, you can actually click this to turn on and turn off the audio mixer. It's still there, all the audio will still work, but it just um, becomes invisible. Now you may not be able to drag these to create a bigger screen. It will depend on the, the existing size of your monitor. All right, so down the middle of the vMix interface are your transitions. So like we showed before, these transitions are for moving between the preview and the output. Now you can change any of these. So we have cut, fade, merge, etc. by clicking the right um, arrow and you can select which one you want to use um, here. So you can press those to do a different type of transition. And you can also edit the time as well down the bottom, like the duration of that particular transition through this menu. The good thing about vMix is that you can program a keyboard or MIDI or X key shortcut to perform um, these transition functions as well. You can just press your keyboard or your X keys button. Now at the very bottom you'll see an FTB which stands for Fade to Black. By clicking this your production will fade to black. So it will also flash to let you know that it is currently um, as a black screen. So when you want to take that back you can turn that off again. Below that is the T-bar, so you can use that to transition between the different um, videos. And then you can also hook that up to a, a MIDI fader or an X keys T-bar if you wanted to use it like a traditional T-bar in your shortcuts. Now on top of this list you'll see full screen. Now the full screen option allows you to display that on your second output. So if in Windows you've got a second display set up, you can press full screen and then you can display say um, your output, preview, multi-view or any of the inputs on that second display. All right, so let's head back down to the bottom. So next to add input, you'll see the record button. This is where you can choose the format, you know, the, the file names, um, audio, um, how long you're breaking up into new files, all that kind of stuff can all be done through the recording setup here. Um, next, you'll see external. Now external is where you can set up your external output settings. This is what you use if you're going to send your production out via an external output card or an external program like Skype. Stream is where you set up all of your streaming information. So selecting, you know, what your destination for your stream, the URL stream key, setting up multiple streams, setting up the quality of the stream, um, viewing the status of the stream. This can all be done from the streaming settings section. Now we have plenty of videos about streaming on our YouTube channel as well. Okay, along the bottom we have the multi-quarter. Now the multi-quarter is um, for ISO recordings for individual cameras. Um, so you can set that up here. And finally we have playlists which gives you the ability to create a, a playlist of your vMix inputs. Any of these features down the bottom can be turned on by clicking the label. So if I click record, it'll turn it on and turn it off by clicking it again. Works the same for external, stream, multi-quarter and playlist. In the right bottom right hand corner we have the overlay section. Now the overlay section is where you can set up the four overlay channels that you have in vMix along with two stingers as well. So as we showed before, as we currently have, we have a fourth channel set up to be picture in picture. But you can set this up however you like. You can have um, you know, a full screen shot and then you can have like a lower third, different effects, um, different positions. You can move it around um, where you want it. And so all of that information can be done through the overlay section in the bottom right. Now next to that we have a three line menu which is affectionately known as the hamburger menu in vMix. So you can use this menu to quickly access data sources manager for adding external data feeds, vMix social for Facebook, Twitter and Instagram content, title designer to build your own custom titles and vMix video tools. If you have a data source in your vMix production then the hamburger menu will appear red. Now next to that you'll see a little window. If you click that it'll open up your shortcut screen. So all of your shortcuts will appear here. You can actually use them by just clicking on the one of the shortcuts. Um, you can click on this to go to the web controller or you can edit your shortcuts by clicking the edit button. Now finally along the bottom here we have a small camera and that will take a snapshot of whatever is currently in your output. So in the far right hand corner we have a little lock button. This allows you to lock your vMix production to stop accidental changes being made. It will prevent vMix from being closed, records and streaming being turned off, inputs being closed, and more. It's a great way to be able to lock your vMix production to prevent any accidents. 
Now underneath this section, at the very bottom left of the screen, you'll notice that you'll have some production settings. This will include what your production is currently using, so 1080p, 2997, and it will also show render time, um, how much CPU vMix is using, and how much total your CPU is using. These guides are there just to let you know how much your computer is handling at the present time during your vMix production. Now let's head back up to the top left of the vMix interface. In the top left, vMix allows you to create presets. These presets allow you to save your vMix production with all of your inputs in place so you can load it up easy later on. The new button will create a brand new blank preset for your production. So this will wipe any uh, existing vMix production that you have set up and create a brand new one. You can select all of the correct production settings from the drop down menu. The open button will allow you to browse for existing productions and then load them up. Just select it and click open. If you want to save your production, click this save button. Now take our word for it, it's, it's very important to save your presets. So if you go ahead and you add a whole bunch of videos and a whole bunch of cameras and titles and that sort of thing, and if you get to save it and then someone closes it down, you might lose it. So make sure that you save it incrementally as you go along. Now the last button is for emergency use only um, and it's not to be relied on. So vMix creates an auto save every 30 seconds in case there's a system crash or accidental shutdown um, and pressing this last button will restore that. Then at the top we have um, pause inputs which will in fact pause all of your video inputs. Um, the basic button removes all of the advanced sort of features just in case you want to simplify it for someone. And finally at the end we have settings. Now settings is where you can make all of your important changes to vMix. For example, um, all of your production settings. Um, like we talked about before, you can change your preview and output color and that sort of stuff here. Um, you can change your, your outputs and then other options. So basic options you can have to change the quick play transition if you want the quick play to be something else or all sorts of stuff in here. So you can change, you know, set up your NDI um, outputs, change information for audio, audio outputs. Um, importantly, we have the web controller here, so if you're looking to be able to control your vMix production um, via a tablet or a phone on the browser, this is where you set that up. Um, and importantly, we also have shortcuts, which is where you set up all your keyboard, MIDI or X key shortcuts, and also the activator section where you can set up custom responses for your control devices like lights and motorized fader. Now, importantly, down the bottom we have an about section, which will list your key. So if you ever need to make changes to your registration key, this is where you do it. You may also be asked to send information to vMix support about an issue you might be having. You can do this via the send support request link down the bottom right hand corner. Now only do this if you've been asked to do it by vMix support. You can also import and export these settings through the bottom left hand corner as well. So in the top right hand corner, you'll see a little question mark. Now the little question mark will take you directly to the vMix full documentation. So you'll be able to go through any pages there or search for anything you're looking for or anything that you're having trouble with. All right, so thanks for giving vMix a go and downloading it and trying it out. Uh, we have plenty of tutorial videos um, about all the different features in vMix on our YouTube channel or through our website. We also have a community of vMix users over at our forums. Um, we can be found on our support page or directly through forums.vmix.com. So if you're ever wondering if vMix can do something, chances are it probably can. Just send through us an email to our support page on vmix.com and we'll be able to answer any of your questions. All of the areas of vMix covered in this video have detailed tutorials that have been linked in the description below. Thanks for watching. Click to watch another exciting vMix tutorial.